Can you tell me the difference between SQL and NoSQL database? This is one of the most commonly asked questions in cloud interviews. And generally, I get the answer, oh, SQL database holds structured data and NoSQL database holds unstructured data. I mean, it's okay, but if you want to impress the interviewer and if you are a subscriber of this channel, I expect more from you guys and girls. Hello guys, Roger back with another video. This is middle of February, so it's the peak of interviewing season. All the budget is approved and this is when generally the number of interviews uh, start going up. Uh, so in this video, we are going to take a look at this very commonly asked interview question. We're gonna learn about uh, NoSQL versus SQL. Then we are gonna look at the databases in AWS. Then we are gonna go over the differences of two hallmark databases in AWS, Aurora versus DynamoDB. And finally, we will go over the conclusion. All right, let's get started. Let's start by lining the differences between SQL and NoSQL databases. On the left, we have SQL database, also known as RDBMS, or Relational Database Management System. And on the right, we have NoSQL database. So the first and foremost difference is a SQL database tables have predefined schema and NoSQL does not have any schema. So let's take a look at this with a little bit more detail because this point is very important. So let's say we have a music table and on the left, we have a schema of the table that we can use with a SQL database. So you can see you defined a table uh, and these are the columns, artist, song title, album title, price, genre, and critic rating. So all the rows in this table needs to conform to this schema. So if one row, let's say for one row, uh, you have to uh, put uh, the release year for the album or something, you cannot because there is no column defined in the schema for that. Now let's take a look at a schemaless structure uh, which is used for NoSQL. So as you can see, if you think each of this box as equivalent to each of the rows in the table, the first row you can see has artist, song title, album title, price, genre, critic rating. However, uh, the second row in the NoSQL table does not have the price, but has a year. And the third row has a bunch of different stuff like promotion info, uh, tour dates, a rotation, etc. So when you use NoSQL tables, you do not need to add a predefined schema. So the second point ties to the first one, uh, which is the SQL database holds structured data. NoSQL database can hold structured and unstructured data. However, there is one advantage of having a predefined schema. The indexes and the secondary indexes and the foreign keys they are more optimized than the NoSQL ones. Uh, the reason is the database knows what columns and what types they are. Uh, and when you define the keys, it knows what it is dealing with. However, uh, for the schemaless tables, since for every item or row, uh, the columns could be different, it is difficult or almost impossible to define all different kinds of keys that SQL database supports. So generally, SQL database is good fit for joins and complex queries, uh, like when you are dealing with multiple tables and you have to do subquery, uh, and then you have to join them, left outer join, right outer join. Uh, SQL tables are really good for that, uh, right? Because uh, like I said, uh, since there are predefined columns and then you define indexes, primary key, secondary key, foreign key on them, the database knows how to sort them, how to optimize them. Uh, however, for the NoSQL, it is generally not a good fit for complex uh, multi-table queries. Next, the SQL database emphasizes on ACID properties, which is atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. And NoSQL database follows the Brewer's Cap theorem, which is consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. Okay, this next point is uh, pretty important uh, for interviews and also for real-world projects. SQL databases generally scales vertically. 
so what does vertical scaling mean? Uh, if you need uh, more CPU or more firepower, uh, you have to select a bigger server, right? Uh, that's what vertical scaling means. However, a NoSQL database, it can scale horizontally. Scaling horizontally means uh, you don't have to go up in the server size, you can add additional servers uh, for scaling. And then one point uh, worth noting is AWS DynamoDB, which is AWS's uh, premier NoSQL database, it scales automatically. So some of the examples of SQL databases are Oracle, IBM DB2, Amazon Aurora, Amazon RDS. Uh, some of the examples of NoSQL databases are uh, DynamoDB, MongoDB, Cassandra. So one important thing to note is with the advent of technology, segregation of use cases for SQL and NoSQL are not as black and white as it used to be. Uh, multiple factors need to be considered. Uh, so let's say, for example, we said uh, that SQL databases follows ACID properties. However, now DynamoDB, which is uh, Amazon's premier NoSQL database, it can also follow ACID property. Uh, for SQL, even though that's true for 99% of the cases where it has to scale vertically, however, there's a new Aurora option called Aurora Serverless, uh, which can scale horizontally. So let's take a look at SQL and NoSQL databases in AWS. Uh, so under SQL databases, we have Amazon Aurora and Amazon RDS. And then for NoSQL, we have Amazon DynamoDB, Amazon DocumentDB with the MongoDB capability, and Amazon Managed Apache Cassandra service. So one thing to note, you can always run uh, your favorite non-AWS database on EC2. Uh, however, if you can, you should always use one of the AWS native databases. Uh, so, all right, with that being said, let's take a look at Amazon Aurora versus Amazon DynamoDB. Amazon Aurora is MySQL and PostgreSQL compatible relational database built for the cloud. It is five times faster than standard MySQL and three times faster than standard PostgreSQL at one tenth the cost. Amazon DynamoDB is key value and document database with single digit millisecond performance at any scale. Amazon Aurora supports multi-master. So in the event of instance or availability zone failures, multi-master enables the Aurora database to maintain read and write availability with zero application downtime. However, uh, multi-master for Amazon Aurora currently only supported for MySQL and not the PostgreSQL. DynamoDB also supports multi-master. Cross-region active-passive replication is supported uh, for MySQL uh, for Amazon Aurora. This is also known as global databases. This is designed for globally distributed applications, allowing a single Amazon Aurora database to span multiple AWS regions. In the unlikely event of a regional degradation or outage, one of the secondary regions can be promoted to read and write capabilities in less than one minute. So this is one of the power move from DynamoDB. Uh, so DynamoDB also supports global tables. However, it is cross-region active active replication supported. Uh, so what that means is, uh, let's say you have a table running in US East 1 and getting replicated to US West 2. You can write on either region for this table. So if you uh, insert a row in the US West 2 for this table, it's gonna get replicated from US West 2 U, to US East 1. And likewise, if you write a row in US East 1 version of this table, it's gonna replicate it back to US West 2 and keep these two in sync, which is very, very difficult thing to do if you are managing it yourself. For Amazon Aurora, you can choose multi-AZ and read replicas to provide high availability. Amazon DynamoDB inherently replicates across three availability zones. It is highly available and durable. If you need to increase CPU, Amazon Aurora does vertical scaling. So basically you have to choose a more powerful uh, EC2 to run in. Uh, however, there is this new service called serverless Aurora, which scales automatically. Uh, however, it is not as scalable as DynamoDB. So this is another amazing feature of DynamoDB that it is inherently scalable. 
it can handle more than 10 trillion requests per day and peaks of more than 20 million requests per second. Amazon Aurora has integrated cache. Uh, however, it is uh, managed behind the scenes. Uh, you cannot adjust or fine tune anything. Uh, for DynamoDB, it provides adjustable in-memory caching via DynamoDB Accelerator or DAX. You can enable backup and snapshots for disaster recovery for Amazon Aurora. Amazon DynamoDB is inherently durable. However, point in time backups can also be enabled. So now that we understand the differences between Amazon Aurora and Amazon DynamoDB, let's take a look at some of the customers who uses these two databases. So these are some of the notable names for the MySQL compatible Amazon Aurora, uh, Autodesk, Capital One, Dow Jones, Netflix is a big one, and there's a bunch more. So if now if we take a look at the DynamoDB customers, uh, we can see Nike, Netflix, Capital One, and a bunch of other ones. So which brings me to the conclusion. So as you can see, uh, the companies like Netflix, Capital One, they are using combination of SQL and NoSQL databases. So you have to pick right tool for the right job. So if you are in charge of a project, it's not about all or nothing. It is not like, okay, so I'm selecting this NoSQL database. So even when uh, something will fit SQL database, I have to fit everything in this NoSQL database. No. Uh, currently, most of the modern projects are microservice based. And as you know, each microservice can have its own database. So if some microservice is more suitable to have a SQL database, then use Amazon Aurora. If some other microservice is more suitable with a NoSQL database, use DynamoDB. Always consider the actual use case, cost requirements, performance requirement, and select your underlying database. So at the end of the day, it's not really SQL versus NoSQL. It's more about SQL and NoSQL. You have to use both of these technologies to your advantage. That is the video. Uh, if you have other interview questions in mind that you want me to go over, uh, please comment below. And if you like this video, please smash that like button and click subscribe. I will see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.